Elias, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Good morning. I like your sweatshirt. You, look, you always have a vibe going on. Like your Instagram <laughs> right. is super stylish, super curated. I'm here for oh, it. Man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Cruel Summer is the free form breakout hit. Um, I feel like coming into summer, I've talked to multiple members of your cast and this show has just blown people out of the water, right? It, you wow. would think it would be a teen drama situation, but it's totally not that. Uh, before we dive into the show, because I'm so excited to talk to you, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. Uh, I want to find out a little bit more about Elias. Um, You were born and raised here in Los Angeles and you started acting at the age of seven. Talk to us a little bit about what sparked your interest in this industry in acting. Um, well, I've always, 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 um, as a young child, I love movies. I love television. I, um, I started, I was, I was singing actually, not by choice. I was actually singing, um, at my church and, um, the, my choir director at the time, like the youth director, he ended up, um, introducing me to a woman who ran a conservatory and, um, you know, in the inner city of like Los Angeles. I sort of like South Side Los Angeles. And um, I think from there, getting on the stage, you know, dancing, singing, acting, all of those things, I really came into myself. And <clears throat> it was such a great community of other, you know, kids and teenagers and stuff like that. And I just felt so at home. And yeah, I just wanted to build my life around that. And I think um, after that, just stepping into television and film, it was, you know, that whole world is like something everyone, you know, people dream of, being able to see how these things are made. And I think getting the opportunity to do that, I was like, I would never ever take this for granted or let this go. I'm just gonna run with this because you know I love this so much. So it's, it's definitely working for you. The camera oh. loves you, right? The fans, <laughs> the camera loves you. I wanna ask you, what would you describe as your big great moment? What would you describe as that moment for you? Um, as far as projects go. Your big break, yeah. What what project? What would you say your first project was like? Oh, I'm really like doing this. This is the big leagues. What would you describe as that moment? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I've uh, felt like I've hit a big break. I think when you're in it and you're sort of you know there on the outside, everyone's telling you all the amazing things and they're you know congratulating you and they're you know acknowledging. Mm -hmm you know, the things that you're doing. But I think as the person, sometimes it's hard to, you know, stop and go, wow, this is, this is everything I prayed for. This is everything I, I meditate or, you know, like manifested. Um, so I think when I stop and have those moments, it's, it's every time I get a job or every time I find myself <clears throat> on a set where it's just a, a great environment. And at, at the end of the day, or I think it's in the morning time, to be honest with you, when I sit down in that hair and makeup chair, I always remind myself, like, man, like, you are really doing this, like doing what you love, living in your purpose. So it's, right. it's really every project, honestly, to tell you the truth. Wow. I have to ask you, Aaliyah, because you're so young and you're like living in your purpose, as you just mentioned, you're working <laughs> and doing your dream job. What advice would you share for those who are watching, who are your age, young, or even older people, people in general, who are wanting to pursue a passion project or you know they have this dream career that they've always wanted to do but they're afraid to step into that what advice could you share with them at all hmm i think <clears throat> as artists mm -hmm. i think um no matter what form of art you do i think it's very important to find fulfillment outside of that because art is going to bring us joy is what we love to do it's it's our purpose uh you know or what have you it's um you know it's what we love and I think finding fulfillment outside of that thing will allow for there to be no sort of, you know, disappointment or no sort of, you know, you, you can't really fail at that point. Because if you feel fulfilled outside of those things, you know, every single time you get the opportunity to do that thing, you're going to do it, you know, with all, you know, with everything you got. And I think that's so important <clears throat> for, you know, artists of all, of all kinds or, you know, it doesn't matter what form of art you do. It's just, man, everyone puts sort of their um, their entire life in it, which mm -hmm. is correct. But when those things don't work out, we find ourselves sort of defeated or, you know, sort of, you know, we, we had a pause and then we start questioning things. But I think finding fulfillment outside of those things will allow 
you know, for you to have some good foundation. And if you're happy without it, then when you get it, man, you're on top of the world. Right. And that will just send you, you know? So yeah, I'll just share that with them. I, I think just find happiness outside of, you know, your art. And I think it'll shine through 10 times harder when you are, you know, right. and never, never give up. <laughs> Truly. It's so, it's so cheesy, but man, you just got to be persistent because a lot of things, <clears throat> a lot of things in life are out of our control, especially, you know, in a, in a field like this, a lot of things are out of your control. It's just, it's just about, you know, just continuing to do it. And one day people are going to respond to it and more people are going to respond to it. And before you know it, you know? Right. Yeah. So that was good advice, young man. I have to oh. say, I'm going <laughs> to advice myself. And the people are responding to you on screen. As I mentioned, the camera loves you. The fans love you. We love you. You're killing oh. it in cool summer. Let's talk to us about where you were, where were you when you got the call um, about this project? And then when you <laughs> read the script, what did you think about your character, Vince? Talk to us a little bit about that. Man, I, uh, it was, um, so we shot the pilot in uh, 2019. That's when mm -hmm. all these things were being created just before the pandemic. And uh, I was working at a clothing store. I'd only been there two weeks. Um, no it was way. a new job. Yeah, it was, it was a new job and, you know, something I just stepped into and, um, you know, I, I, I don't know what it was, but it was something about this. There was something about this project initially, just reading the script that just felt right. And um, about this character, I mean, I mean, the story, reading the first episode, man, that, that just had me like, I mean, I need to know what's about to happen or I need to know where these the lives of these young kids go, um, and, as well as the adults. Um, I, I just felt like, yeah, but like I was saying, I was I was actually <clears throat> I was working at a clothing store and I got the call and um I missed the call initially and it was a voicemail saying, Hi, you know, we just wanted to, you know, reach out so if you can give us a call back or whatever. And I'm thinking that they're being polite, you know, like maybe they really liked me, but it didn't go. And mm -hmm. they were trying to tell me, like, you know, we really love you, but not this one. And then yeah, I, I think we were on the phone for like two minutes before they were like. Oh, and by the way, like, yeah, we, we really want you to come on down. And I, man, I ran out of that store so fast. <laughs> I ran out the store and I just, I don't know, I was just really happy because like, like I said, anytime you get a chance, an opportunity to do what you love, especially on a scale like this, you know, with the creative team behind it and um, the amazing di the director, uh, Max Winkler, who directed the pilot, um, man just all these amazing people just creative people that i was just like wow like they want to work with me i want to work with them and i'm going to be able to do that so right. yeah i was i was really happy <laughs> <laughs> i know you were you played Jeanette's loyal best friend Vince. i love your character so much i just feel oh, like you. are you anything at all like your character uh i would like to think so <laughs> the good parts <laughs> i good love parts. That. How would you describe it to a, to viewers who may not have seen this, who may, after they watch this interview, go and stream episodes one through nine? How would you describe your character? Mm, Vince is pure. Vince yeah. is a pure, pure soul. Um, he's, he's the best friend that I feel like everyone needs. Not that everyone has, but that everyone needs. Um, he has foundation, like I mentioned earlier. I think he was just raised in a household with really, really good foundation instilled in, in his heart and his mind. And I think that, um, yeah, just given the circumstances that Jeanette Turner has to deal with on her show, Jeanette Turner is the, uh, the lead of our show. She's the, the main character on our show. Um, I think that being Vince's best friend, man, what a, what, just a perfect situation for her because he just he just he rides for her so hardcore the entire the entire way through and i think that's something everyone needs but vince is um yeah he's a very very special part of this project um and he's i think he's honestly just like you know the heartbeat of like you know all the just everything honestly he's really he's the heart man he, a lot of the heart like lies in the moments that you see vince on screen because it's so i feel like wholesome mm -hmm. his interactions with Jeanette 
Ben, uh, yeah. um, with Jamie. It's just so many great things. So I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Um, so how wholesome. involved were you creatively, um, Elias, in bringing this character from paper to screen? I'm sorry, one more time? Yes. How involved were you creatively behind the scenes from reading the script to bringing this character on screen? I would like to say, um, I would like to thank actually the, the the team because this is by far one of the most collaborative um, projects <clears throat> that I've ever experienced. Um, and I think that they really allowed for us to have a voice okay. as actors, which, you know, in television especially is something I feel like is really rare. You know, sometimes you just, they're like, do this. But I think um, <laughs> with this show specifically and with this team, they really trusted us and, um, they really trusted our instincts and our abilities. And I think that um, they made these decisions just based off of who we were as human beings first. And I think um, that goes a lot to say about how closely connected we are with these characters and how much we are li like them in real life. Because um, I think, you know, making a decision based off that, you know, that, that really screams that to me, um, that they're really, you know, that there are a lot of qualities that we have, you know, in common <clears throat> with these uh, characters. And I think they, yeah, they really, gave us a lot of room to bring, you know, a lot of our own vibes to these people. And man, it's so good. Everyone is so, so good. Every time I, I watch the show, I'm like, y'all are so good. You so know? you're blown away just as we are at home. Like, what the Yeah. Amazing. Wow. They're, so, they're so special, man. Wow. Um, we get a clear and better understanding of Vince and Ben's relationship in this week's episode. We're not gonna spoil anything for anybody, but you guys catch up, get into it. Y'all need to come <laughs> and watch this. Um, but to be a black young gay man in Texas in the 90s, I can't imagine, I'm from Texas, I'm from Dallas. Mm. Mm. Very yeah. conservative place, right? Yeah, I'm from Dallas. So yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that was like. Um, what do you think Ben is dealing with in his, because we see him like kind of grappling. He has this situation that happens in the car, I won't say, but what do you think Ben is dealing with and grappling with in his identity? Because you can kind of see it play out on screen. Even you, without even words being spoken, you see the emotion, you see you wanting to be there for him and wanting to, be loyal as your character Vince is. Talk to us a little bit about this dynamic and what can we expect to see? Can we expect to see anything else unfold with you two coming up? Mm, man, well, <clears throat> just on that topic, just pressure, you know, it's that's a lot of pressure. And I think um, in that moment, I think Ben just, just felt fear. You know, you got all eyes on you. There's a lot happening. You know, on top of the fact that you're already injured, but then there's this moment and um, I don't know, I just can imagine what would be running through my mind. I'm about to be willed away. And like, when I come back, is everyone gonna, you know, am I gonna be safe? Is is Vince gonna be safe? You know, mm -hmm. I think um, it wasn't just a, a decision he made <clears throat> for himself. I think it was for Vince too, because like you mentioned, Vince is black, gay, teenage boy in the nineties in, Texas, Dallas, yeah. Texas. It's like, man, I, I can only, you know, I can only apply what I think that that would feel like or what that would, you know, mm -hmm. what that would stop my breath. But I, I think just all of those things, man, I think for Ben, it was like really more about, you know, the both of them than it was about not being like outed like for himself. I think it was a safety thing because he loves Vince a lot, man. They connect so so deeply um yeah so i think it was it was definitely it went two ways there in that situation you guys really like brought it in that whole bit i mean like again oh, you guys weren't really saying much it was like hanging out in your eyes so oh, i mean you. that's the talent in itself right to get the audience to connect with the viewers through you know emotion and you guys. Yeah. Shout out to Nathaniel Ashton, who plays Ben. He's so, so great. Yeah, you guys really brought that. Um, what's up with Mallory? <laughs> Talk about Mallory. What, what are your thoughts on her? As, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing, Elias? What are your oh, thoughts man. on her as 
Elias, not as Vince. What what do you think? What's at play with her behind? It's something going on. And there's so many theories that are playing out on Twitter, of course. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Mallory? Something not right with her to me. Mm, Mallory. <laughs> I think Mallory, man, what I noticed about this show, this is a lot of pain. Everyone's just experiencing their own form of like pain. And I think Mallory is, you know, as well. And I think she's just, um, she's even more, you know, I think she's great calling, uh, asking for a friend more than Jeanette is, you know, eventually after they, you know, part ways. And I, I, I don't think she necessarily has any, I mean, you know, she has a lot of, like, she's, she can be pretty spiteful, but I don't know. I just think Mallory is just hurt, you know, by all the events that are taking place and she's just confused. And, um, yeah, that's causing her to lot, make a lot of decisions and, you know, a lot of new friends and stuff like that, which definitely, like you said, is confusing for the audience. It is. Um, and they're trying to wonder why she's so hardcore trying to, you know, take yeah. Jeanette Carter down. But I mean, um, I think um, in this next week and when the finale comes around that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to say, I don't know. How no, I just I want everyone to see for themselves. I just think everyone is experiencing pain, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. If there, if there is a message in this show, if there is a message, right, what, what do you think the message of this show is? Mm. I think the message of the show <clears throat> would be to stay true to yourself, honestly. Um, you see so many examples of people saying to themselves on this show um, in different ways, <clears throat> not just so surface level, but I think um, I always mention this <clears throat> in the very first episode when Jeanette Turner goes to blow out the candle and she finds her, her dad, Greg Turner in the kitchen and she is asking to be, you know, beautiful and popular and all these things. And he asked her to make a wish. Ah, that makes me cringe so hard because I just wish so badly that he would have just been like, oh, like you're already all of those things, right. you right. know, and would have gave her that, given her that reassurance. But I think, I don't know, just to have like that moment and for him to continue to go, yeah, you can have it if you want it. Like, you know what I mean? It's like kind of started a whole snowball of, you know, chasing okay. after something and just, snow yeah. So I just think um, just staying true to yourself um, would be a big theme for the show, definitely. One of, I'm sure, many, you know? So, right. yeah, definitely. off the top of my head, that's what I think. That's good. I recently had Ashley Chestnut on, and I asked her, and I'm going to ask you, who does she believe? And, you know, of course, she said she's Team Kate. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the same thing. As a loyal best friend, Vince, who do you believe? And then I want to know, who does Elias believe? <laughs> because... Ooh. I don't know who I believe at this point, and we halfway through. It's about to be over, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, three questions: who do who does Vince believe? Who do yes. I believe? In? <laughs> yes. Oh, two questions. Um, that's so hard. I think Vince believes in. <laughs> He just, he's, he's, Vince is all equality. He just wants everyone to be happy. I think Vince thinks that, you know, Kate is dealing with a lot. Jeanette's dealing with a lot. I don't know if he necessarily believes one or the other. What? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the side eye now. Wait a minute. What? Um, yeah, it's a lot. That's, it's, there's a lot going on there. I personally believe Jeanette Turner. Personally. So that's Elias believes personally, or is that yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I believe Jeanette Turner. I don't Vince. Um Vince, of course, Jeanette is his best friend and he's gonna do whatever he can for her. But I think Vince is such a neutral, like just he's naturally just um on the fence about things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think for Elias, I definitely believe Jeanette. Okay. Why does Vince, why is he so right or die for Jeanette? Although he notices certain little things, like she keeps going over to the house. Like, why is he, you know, it's one thing to be loyal, but is he 
loyal to a fault in that friendship? Vince loves Jeanette so, so dearly. Um, it's, it's, um, I mean, I, I asked people if this was where you're in, I see the relationship this way in my mind. They grew up, they might as well have lived in the same house. They've known each other since, you know, right. from diapers. And I think, um, I think, you know, would you do the same for your brother or your sister or, right. you know, or your, fa any family, you know, I just think it's just as simple as that. Honestly, it's, I mean, of course there are underlying, you know, things, but just, off rip, you know, it, it doesn't even matter wh whether or not he believes her truly. And that's what I like to ask myself, like, does Vince really believe her, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's just his friend, you know, it's, it's his right. sister. It's, you're gonna do it regardless. Right. You are such a mystery as you give us a little bit of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, I'm always looking at you like, what is he thinking? What is Vince, what is going on in the back of Vince's mind? Because even though there's an innocence at play with your character, there is a bit of mystery as to what's going on, what's going on inside of there. You know what I mean? Do you feel yeah. the same way? Oh yeah, no, I agree. Thank you for <laughs> being so observational. <laughs> I pay attention. I'm very observational. Um Elias, why do you think this show has resonated with viewers? Why do you think fans are having all of these theories? Why do you think people love this show so much? Mm. Um, well, besides the fact that it's just a really great show and everyone's so talented and it just, just brought their hearts to every aspect of it, I think that it's it's really relatable because um everyone on the show is dealing with something. It's not just the kids, it's the adults right. too. Everyone is sort of screwed up to some degree and, you know, battling or fighting with something, some flaw, you right. know, or something like that. And um, I think, yeah, old and young across the world, people are watching it and they're relating to different parts of it and bringing their ideas together. And um, man, there, there are moments on the show where I'm like, yeah, I was. I didn't live in the '90s, but I was in high school at one point. Or, you know, like I, I didn't. Um, I wasn't alive in the '90s, but I, I did things like you know, ride bikes with my friends, and you know, we've had falling outs. I just think there's just so many real things, like you know, like it's just so relatable to like real life that like you know, you can't help but to feel those feelings when you see them on screen, especially portrayed so well that you feel like it just takes you right back to, you know, when that happened with you and your friend right. or you and and you, your teacher, you and your uh, parents, you know? So it's like, man. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. What can you tease about the upcoming episode? <laughs> what can we expect to see? Are we going to be, I'm sure we're going to be left like, what the heck? What can you tell us? Um, Without <laughs> getting in trouble, look, don't be. Um, I, I, I'll, I don't know if I can tell you anything. I just want everyone to just gear up because. Um, oh, not gear up. Are we in? Yeah, for I, think, I think. Um, I think everyone will be really, really satisfied. It's been such a long, you know, roller coaster ride. Right. Um, an exciting one too, which is you know just twists and turns in every corner, man. But I think um in the end. Um, a lot of people are just going to be blown away by the outcome and uh, wow. sort of, um, yeah, a lot of things, questions answered, a lot of, um, you know, things sort of tied together. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited too. Anything on season two, what can you tell us? We need to know because I'm sure mouths are going to be dropped on the floor and people are going to want more. Season two, what are your thoughts? What do you know? I I I know nothing. I I I don't I'm I've been so involved in my family life that I honestly I haven't really, you know, had my ear open, but um <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. Keep it keep it. I like it. Keep keep that energy. Keep that energy. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay. Okay. I'm here for it. What does a dream project look like for you? Dream project, dream cast. Who do you want to work with on what project speaks to you? That's such a hard question. Um, I get asked the question often, like, what is like a role that you dream of playing? Or I think that's so hard because uh, 
I, I've, you know, stories come around and around and, you know, you read books and you read different short stories and in the paper or online or wherever. And I just think that um, I, I just like to stay present and I, you know, I don't try and set something up for, you know, it's, it's always great to manifest things, but I try and stay present. And I think that just day to day as things show up in my email or as I meet with directors and producers and hear about their projects and things like that. And, you know, I think if I connect with it in that moment, then yeah, sure, go for it. But I, I think there's no project in particular or no <clears throat> actor in particular, man, there's so many great talented of people on this earth, man. It's, it's so hard to just put a finger on it, but yeah, there's nothing specific for right. me. I think that the world has so many different uh, situations and circumstances and, you know, stories and people's stories. And man, there's so many things that have happened in this lifetime, like that I feel like it's the possibilities are endless. And until, you know, it comes across my desk and I pick it up, then I just, I absolutely won't know to tell you the truth. I like that perspective. That's, that's a good perspective to have. I like that. Thanks. <laughs> I like, I like that. What, um, would you be interested at all in stepping behind the camera, um, directing, Absolutely. anything like that? Absolutely. I think, um, as I enter my sort of <clears throat> like earlier to like mid twenties, I think it's going to be a learning process as I, you know, I'm in front of the camera still and, you know, acting and stuff like that. But I think, um, Cruel Summer, opening the doors to some of these bigger projects, I'll definitely build better relationships to where I can, you know, learn a few things from, you know, the the crew and learn a few things from the, the guys who are, you know, operating these cameras, working on these cameras and um, sort of setting up these shots. And I think one day, yeah, I just pray that that leads to an opportunity for me to, um, like you said, step behind the camera and direct something beautiful, you know, and uh, yeah, I think the work for that starts now. Absolutely. So, Putting that out there, um, <laughs> hopefully soon, in a few years, you know, I'll have the opportunity to do that. Thanks for asking. That's of such course. a huge part of my life, actually. Thank you. Of course. So whether you're behind or in front, I want to talk to you. I want to keep up with you. I have to know what please. you're doing. I feel like you're like please. my little brother now. Like, oh, please. Come on, sis. <laughs> seriously. seriously. Please. I have to ask before I let you go. Do you keep up in touch with the cast at all from Cool Summer? Or are you guys Absolutely. Talking? Who's the last person you talked to? Uh, I went to an event with Harley Quinn Smith to support her. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You have, again, a big sister in me. I'm so proud of you. You are such a wise you so young man. I'm so, so proud of you. I'm here for everything you have going on. Come back and talk to me anytime uh, you want to. You have a great day. Congratulations oh, again. The buzz you said we used to be a singer. Oh, where is the buzz? <laughs>